This episode is sponsored by WeHaveMerch.com. WeHaveMerch.com. Prices starting at only $12.99. Sizes up to 6XL. 17 different shirt designs. Buy two shirts and get a bigger discount. Anybody that buys three shirts gets a 10-minute guest spot on Cool Kids Countdown. Buy one now. This episode is also sponsored by the following. Shooting the Shiznit is sponsored by SpunkLube.com. SpunkLube is an award-winning personal lubricant that's fun. SpunkLube is available in four varieties. Hybrid, pure silicone, natural, and pink. This month, by just retweeting an episode, you will be entered to win a month's supply of Spunk Loop, an all-in Shooting the Shiznit shirt, and an all-in poster. American Hostile Seven-Cent Wrestling presents Fall Brawl 2018 on October 6th in Kennebec, Missouri. Doors open at 6, bell time, 7.30. Event will be held at the American Legion Building, 1615 First Street. Featuring WWE Hall of Famer Coco Beware, Memphis wrestling icon Bill Superstar Dundee, all-in sensation Marco Stunt, along with stars such as Austin Lane, Missouri Bad Boys, Naughty by Nature Rude. That's October the 6th, 2018. Kenan, Missouri, 1615 First Street, the American Legion Building. Doors open at 6, bell time, 7.30. Be there. Have you listened to last week's episode, the week before, or all the episodes? By the way, all of them are at www.stspod.club and all of the fine podcast players. Now on with the show. Got me, beat me down, beat me down. Do you think you're on top? Well, I'm not when you left me. I've been picking up steam and I pick myself up. I'm stronger this time. Hey guys, uh, welcome shooting the shiznit live from STS Studios in St. Louis, Missouri. And I have coming from the green room, I had some Pepsi over there. I had some, uh, well, he said whiskey, and I had to put, I don't drink anymore. I might be 420 friendly, but. I actually don't drink, haven't drank since 1991, but I put some Jack Black, one of my favorite things to drink, uh, over there for him too. So come on in, uh, I have Dreadhead Kev. How's it going, Kev? It's going good, man. It's going real good. Now, I don't drink too often, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what I do on this show is I bring people either I've been knowing forever to talk to, uh, to talk to or someone I don't even know, and I see on either Facebook or Twitter and say, hey, you know, I'm, that guy might be cool. I want to talk to him about stuff. And um, I see you all the time with one of my uh, longtime friends in the wrestling business, Dustin Starr, and that's where I actually saw your picture and see you all the time taking pictures of uh, Dustin uh and uh, Maria there, actually, I guess recently it was uh, Dustin against Jerry Lawler. You had some pictures up, right? That was you? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, he might have just posted some new ones at the Corinth show. Uh, he, uh, he worked Derek King uh, in Corinth, and that was a, it was a pretty good show. All the front row was completely, like, taken, so that was pretty cool to see. So, yeah. Um, yeah, you should that have some of those a, up. Um, that was that global wrestling. That was uh, Jeff Jarrett. He kind of did Jeff actually work or did he just do a run in? He did a run in. Yeah, he did a run in. He's been doing that a lot. He he works AAA, but the shows that he does around here, he's just run in. I want to start though. We always like to start from the beginning, kind of thing, and start talking about. Where did you do a wrestling? Because you you do a lot of you. Uh, you're a photographer. You take a lot of pictures. Uh, of wrestling, and we'll get into that of uh, bands and all kinds of other stuff, which is fun. That I see your stuff, but but were you a wrestling fan, fan from you know way back, or is it just something you just got into? Man, I uh, my brother got me into it a long time ago. Oh man, I, I 
God, I, I remember like the nineties, like, you know, Hulk Hogan and stuff. And then back then they had like all the merchandise where you had like the Hulk Hogan underwear and all that other stuff. I would <laughs> yeah. wear it all, man. I'd wear it all. And like, um, I had, I had the old original wrestling buddies back then. That was, that was one of my favorite things to, to wrestle with when I was a kid too. So that's how long ago it's been for me. Um, my brother got, uh, got into it for a little while. He got out of it, started doing, uh, doing, uh, you know, concerts and stuff. And, uh, he's been doing that for, oh God, a long time. So, uh, and it just kind of transitioned for me for, uh, keep going. Um, I didn't actually go to our first wrestling show for a long time. It was a long time. I never saw a wrestling show until probably, I can't remember the date, but I do remember the, uh, the event. It was at the Coliseum. It was Clash of Legends. And I remember that. So you, You're talking about Clash of Legends. Can you actually remember who was on that show? Yeah, yeah. It, I, I can remember who was on it. The, the Moon Dogs, LOD was on it, Mr. Perfect. Uh, I saw all of them before, unfortunately, they uh, they passed away. Mr. Perfect was one of my favorites. Uh, I saw Austin Idol before he retired. Like, you know, and that was cool seeing him wrestle. So, so yeah, that was my first event. And I tried, and I think it was around 2001-ish. And I think my second event was like Monday Night Raw. And uh, that was my second event. So, yeah. And so did you get it? You being from the Memphis area now, I mean, Memphis wrestling has always been uh, huge in the area. You, you know, Where did you, uh, where were you born and raised at? Around what area? Um, I was born and raised uh, around Olive Branch, Mississippi. All so right. not too yeah, far. Yeah. I could throw a rock to Memphis. Yeah, yeah. I could throw a rock to Memphis. Um, so yeah, I was I was born and raised from there. I was actually born in Senatoria, but raised in Olive Branch. Um, so yeah, <laughs> just to clarify all that. Well, it, you know, that's I always say Memphis to make everyone uh, clarify uh, that I was from the Memphis area, which I was really a sort of northeast Arkansas, I, southeast Missouri. Uh, you know, but we we got all the spot shows, and then Mid South Coliseum was a big deal. And uh, growing up, and I guess in that area, you had the same thing as I did. Everyone knew who Jerry Lawler was, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, uh, and, and and if you if you lived in the area, if you absolutely met him. I mean, it's I mean everybody. I feel like everybody in Memphis has met him. <laughs> you know. <laughs> It's one of those things that if you know who Jerry Lawler is, you've either came in contact with him some way, shape, or form. <laughs> right, right. You're uh, right. He's Dad. that big of a deal. He's that big of a deal. I, I, that, I've always thought that. I was like, well, if he's in Memphis, everybody's had had to met him. So. And you said you. Uh, so what? Uh, the Attitude Era. You was before that, or did we watch wrestling during the whole time? Or yeah. Did you, did you stop watching I, wrestling and then go back, or how did that all work? No, I um I watched wrestling from uh you know uh, WWF was on TV. I can't remember what, exactly what you know the television show it was, but I remember my brother was able to get it uh, back in the '90s when it was on TV, and I'd sit there and watch Hulk Hogan. That's that was like my remembrance, and like to watch Ultimate Warrior and all of them. I never watched any of the pay per views because I don't think we had that at the time. So. Um, but yeah, like uh, that was I watched it all the way up till till now, you know. And I've only been to two WrestleManias in my life, so um, the last one I went to was with actually with Dustin in Orlando, and that was like by far the best one. So, and I've I've always said that was probably going to be the best one, and it was. That's yeah. I've been a wrestling fan forever. Never been to never been to WrestleMania. It's just too many, usually too many people for me, but. Uh, uh, you, yeah, I've I've always said that. I've always said that too. I was like, man, I, I'd like to go, but it's just I'm I don't like being around big crowds. But it's definitely something you got to experience at least once in your life. You say now you've been a wrestling fan for so long, and then when you're talking about Hulk Hogan and all that, we have seen a transition uh, uh, when it came to you know people were watching VHSs, pay per views, and it's funny that you said we didn't have the capability of a pay-per-view when now you know we just uh we got through uh 
through with one yesterday, uh, and you could do yeah, yeah, they, it's crazy. <laughs> you can do what you want to do on the network. You know, you can. Uh, and this morning, uh, I actually started watching it because I had a football game on Sunday. We're recording this on a Monday afternoon, guys, and so uh, I couldn't get the network. I was mad at the network because uh, it started at the main event, and no matter if I said start at the beginning or whatever. I still got the main event, so I don't know. I watched the main event, and but it's really weird how technology's changed the wrestling business. I mean, we 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 have all this stuff uh, that now we have access to. So what I'm going to ask you is when when did it become apparent to you that not that it, I don't like using the word uh, fake, but when did you know you kind of say, well, you know, it's uh, the fix is in, and then. How did that go into you actually learning how the business works? Well, man, that's hard for me to say because um, I think um, I think once I got older, I would start reading more and and um, I would learn. And then actually trying to be, you know, I, I would try getting into wrestling school and all that other stuff and um, talk to actually became a photographer but that's like later on yeah, well, now, how, how did you but, you say you yeah, tried yeah, to, yeah. we had a break up there just a couple of seconds you said you went to a wrestling school so what wrestling school did you try to get into um i tried to get into um oh god i'm trying to remember there was quite a few of them um i would even actually talk to local guys uh as well but uh there was a guy in uh in arkansas i think you i think a lot of people know um the guy that was mainly, I think he was the main guy in Arkansas. Um, oh God, I'm trying to remember his name. <laughs> My brain just went blank there for a minute. Um, oh, God. Um, I think it was, um, he's related to Buddy Wayne. Do you know who I'm talking about? Ken um, Wayne. Ken Wayne? Ken Wayne, that's, it. that's it. I don't know why I couldn't think of that. I couldn't think of that. I don't know why. That was really weird. Um, but, yeah, I, uh, I was talking to him at the time. Um a long time ago and um we were talking back and forth back and forth and then i started having the whole health issues um that in itself is a, a story of its own um and that's kind of where I, uh, I i didn't know what i wanted to do like all i wanted to do was be a wrestler that's all i wanted to do and um that's all i thought about it's pretty much everything that i thought of <laughs> eat sleep and breathe it and uh but yeah like um Long story short, the health issue kind of slowed that down and pretty much put a halt to that quickly. And now here I am. I'm still, I like it because now, like, a, a lot of the guys know me. You know, I uh, I met Dustin. Uh, it's crazy how where we met. I was looking him up for a while before I actually got to see him wrestle. Believe it or not, like, I, it took me a good bit to actually see him wrestle. Um, cause I think at the time I'm still going through, you know, health problems and stuff in and out of the hospital, dealing with all that. Um, so. Well, tell us yeah, about I, the first uh, time you met Dustin's a big, you know, he's been on the, he's been on the show two or three times and, and he's a, he's a good friend of mine. So, so you finally, would you looked him up on Twitter and then finally met up with him? Well, I actually, I think we, we talked through Instagram for a little bit and, um, I think that's how we first started talking and uh, he told me he had a show coming up, um, uh, not too far. And uh, I actually, the first time I met him was at Fastlane when they finally brought a pay-per-view back to Memphis. I think it was right after, I remember the, the pay-per-view before that was Unforgiven. I think it was Unforgiven 2007, I want to say. Sounds about right. And uh, Undertaker worked on uh, Mark Henry that night. And... um so I remember that. I went to that as well. And then Fastlane, I went to it. And I actually met him in the uh, right into the lobby area. And we, we talked, and he told me about a show that he was coming up. And the story from there just continues <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with yeah, him. Yeah, I know. I see you're uh, part of the crew. And, and Dustin, I know you're going to listen to this. So I, I made sure – I told Kev he had to send me a photograph that had you so that we could use it for the cover of this podcast. I hope he's happy with that. Hey, we're right at the halfway I, mark. We're going to take a quick commercial. When we come back, Kev, we'll, we'll, you can, hey, you can yell what she's going to say. And then I've got, I want to hear more <laughs> about, uh, uh, how you got into photography because you kind of alluded to it and then you sent me something in Twitter, on Twitter there. I want to, I want to talk about. So let's take a quick commercial. We'll be right back. 
Chisnit is sponsored by SpunkLube.com. SpunkLube is an award-winning personal lubricant that's fun. SpunkLube is available in four varieties. Hybrid, pure silicone, natural, and pink. This month, by just retweeting an episode, you will be entered to win a month's supply of SpunkLube, an all-in shooting the Chisnit shirt, and an all-in poster. Hey, have you used that uh, that app Uber Eats? No, I haven't. Man, it's pretty awesome. You know, Uber's famous for, uh, you know, taking over the cab industry. So it looks like now they're taking over the food delivery industry. Really? Yeah, what you can do is you can uh, download the app and you can order from tons of places. I actually ordered from McDonald's today, got a 20-piece McNugget delivered to my house. That sounds amazing. Oh, it's awesome. The big thing is that you can put in a code that I provide for you and you'll get $5 off your first order. $5? Wow. Yes, a whole $5. It's Eats, E-A-T-S, dash, Brian T, 24790-U-E. That's Eats, dash, Brian, B-R-I-A-N-T, 24790-U-E. Put that code in. You get $5 off. That's awesome. I'm so excited. All right, guys, download the app, put in the code, and save $5 on Uber Eats. American Hostile Tabasset Wrestling presents Fall Brawl 2018 on October 6th in Kennebec, Missouri. Doors open at 6, bell time, 7.30. Event will be held at the American Legion Building. 1615 First Street, featuring WWE Hall of Famer Coco Beware, Memphis wrestling icon Bill Superstar Dundee, All In Sensation Marco Stunt, along with stars such as Austin Lane, Missouri Bad Boys, Naughty by Nature Rude. That's October the 6th, 2018, Kenton, Missouri, 1615 First Street, the American Legion Building. Doors open at 6. Bell time, 7.30. Be there. All right, all right. We're back with uh, Dreadhead Kev. Kev, you was going to say something about Dustin Star there, and I cut you off. No, no, it's fine. He should remember that picture. I... Orlando, actually, was wrestling like that. And, uh... <laughs> I think that was like right when we were like buying a bunch of merchandise for the show. So yeah. And it was taken where now? It was taken uh I think at the access store where you can like go and buy merchandise at WrestleMania and all that. That's where we were that's where that picture was taken at. <laughs> oh, okay, cool deal then. Hey, I wanna ask you, when we were talking about bringing you on, uh and you you know, how you got started in photography uh, and you mentioned a little bit your health issues, but you said, uh, I got uh, I got some stories for you for sure. It's crazy how I got started in photography. Brain surgery changed my career and how I got started in photography. That in itself is crazy. So come on, tell us about uh, what's going on here and how we got, we went from whatever you were doing and decided the photography is where you're going. Well... I was at the time I was still trying to get into, you know, wrestling and everything and still trying to fight the doctors because the doctors like still not sure on how to fix me and everything at the time. Um, I actually went to Le Bonner, which I love those guys to death. And I always try to donate as much as I can to them. Um, so they pretty much helped me with my issue. I had seizures a long time ago. Like when I started, they say, God, when I was basically born with this uh, this abnormality, as so to say, and um, they didn't have the technology back then, so they diagnosed it as a baby's headache. So they just didn't have any idea what it was. The seizure. I was actually having seizures when I was a baby, but then I um, all that shit kind of just dissipated. So yeah, <laughs> and then it comes back when I'm 18. Oh, wow. Great time to come back. Yeah, yeah, great time to come back. And uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, I uh, 
I, w- I went, we went and saw a, neuro- a neurosurgeon, uh, went to the doctors, been in and out. Uh, and they, uh, they was like, yeah, there's definitely something on your brain. And, uh, they're like, well, we have to figure out more about it. Had MRIs done. I could tell you literally everything about the brain that there is to know about it because I've been through like this massive, like nowadays technology is just insane. Like what we were talking about, like it's crazy on how technology is for medical do now just with our phones. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the thing that I had was called tubeless sclerosis. I'll send it to you. You can look it up. <laughs> okay. um, there's a, uh, yeah, yeah, it's kind of it's it's really crazy on how what that actually is. It's um the way I understood it is basically like um, an abnormality on any part of the organ. Depending on what uh, part of the organ you have it at, there's a there's a good chance you may die from it. All kinds of stuff. Um, I think only 50 people may have died from that. So it's very low, from what I understood, and uh, I had it on a certain part of my brain, which literally, when they cut it out of my brain, I have a hole about the size of a baseball, about, they, um, yeah, pretty much I went in, we uh, we were in and out of the hospital, like I said, uh, I finally had a massive seizure, the ones that I would have was Petamol, like I would look at you and just kind of blankly stare, that was a seizure, it's crazy, like there's different kinds and all that other stuff. So, uh, I, uh, actually had a grandma seizure when we were going to go and put a Vegas nerve stimulator. It was a device to slow down the seizures at the time. Well, went in, had everything set up, ready to go the next morning to go get this done. And, uh, basically what that thing does, it gives you a, they give you like a, like a keychain, or I think it's like a card or something. I can't remember exactly what other thing they gave you, but one of them is a definitely a keychain, and you just swipe it over your chest, and it cuts the seizure off. Um, and it's crazy because, like, we were, like, the technology was just insane that you could do that now, and I was like, <laughs> okay, cool. It sounds crazy. But the problem with that, you have to have surgery every so many years because of the battery. I guess there's a battery in it that needs to be replaced. So they would oh, go wow. in, replace the battery. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty diverse on that. Um, I had a grandma seizure. There was the neurosurgeon there uh, and the actual surgeon there. And they saw it happen. And I was, it happened on the same floor that they were on, which is crazy. And uh, they're like, we got enough information so we could give you two options. I was still coming out of the seizure, like trying to get my wits back together. I couldn't tell you what happened. Like all I remember, they would they would do a lot of tests to make you have a seizure to get that kind of information. The last thing I was doing was blowing on a pinwheel. <laughs> That's what I was doing, and uh, I don't remember anything after that. But uh, I do remember them coming in the next day, and they're like, "Well, we got two options. Either you can go ahead with the surgery that you're wanting, and you'll still have seizures, or we can go ahead and take it out. We can remove that part." And you'll be 97% seizure-free. I said, without question, I don't need to think about it. Let's take it out. We set it up. I think it was, I have the date wrote down of the actual surgery. It was 11 9, 10 when I had the surgery. So uh, I, was, I was in and out of the hospital for about three or four years, I think, before I actually got it taken care of. Because we were just trying to figure out what it is and everything. And then they finally gave it a name, tubeless sclerosis. So, like, it's a big, long word. Um, and then uh, that actually changed it. I kept talking to the doctor. I was like, well, can this, can I, can I get into wrestling? He says, to be honest with you, if you take one good hit, you'll be a vegetable for the rest of your life. And I said, all right, well, I guess that changes that. Sat around, uh, was depressed about it because I was like, well, this is what I wanted to do. But, it's fine. There's something else out there. It's got to be. Um, a lot of people kept telling me, they're like, man, you take good photos once you get into that. And I kept shooting it down. Literally, I would shoot it down. It's like, I don't want to do that. Then I tried my hands in tattooing a little bit. And um, 
that I did that for a while. And then I just started sitting around thinking, I was like, do I really want to just sit in a building and wait for people to come to me and be bored or actually go and have fun? And uh, I'm actually having the most fun of my life doing this. And it's, I, I made a career out of it um, doing this. And um, yeah, that's, I got started, like, I watched Dustin maybe wrestle three times in my life. So that tells you how many times I've shot Dustin Star. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so like I always told him, I was like, man, it's rare if I get to watch you wrestle anymore. I was like, I there's days that I wish I could do that. Um, it's fun. Don't get me wrong, it's absolutely fun. Um, I became uh, good friends with Der- uh, Derek King. Derek King's another good buddy of mine. Um, the people that I have met and uh, that I have got to be a privilege of being a part of with this has been phenomenal. Um, it's crazy because like uh, one person told me there was a photographer that told me he's like yeah um, there's no way you can do this within a year it takes years to do it and then um, I was like well, I want to kind of prove that wrong and I did I proved it wrong like um, my goal was to do concerts as well and um, here I'm doing national acts my first national act that I did was uh, Scott Staff from Creed and Art of Dying they've done um they sung for NXT when it was actually on US. Right, yeah, I'm familiar with it. That's one of the things that you said. Uh, now you do, you don't just do. And we're gonna get back to wrestling and groups, but you do things like weddings and stuff like that, also, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I did. Uh, I did a wedding for my buddy as well uh, for his family. Uh, it's uh, those are rare to come by because uh, I'm more focused on trying to do concerts right now. But if somebody asks me, like, hey, I want you to shoot, I, all right, when and where, you know, I'm I'm open for it. But, like, I'm there's like I'm also doing stuff for Rock House Live. I've shot at High Tone here in Memphis, New Daisy. Um, I think the first of this year I shot Skillet. Um, right. I've seen that. that. Was, I've seen uh, those. That, that was a – yeah, yeah, that was that was a cool moment uh, to be in FedEx Forum and do that. That was really cool. And then here recently, um, man, it's cool to shoot for the Redbirds. Like, I, I got to do that. And I've never shot baseball in my life, but they gave me the opportunity, and they liked it. So I, <laughs> it's crazy, you know. Like, well, how does uh, that work? I mean, I see you really doing fun. I see you doing wrestling photographs, and and when I did wrestling pictures, I I actually started a photographer when I first got into wrestling, and then sell I would sell the photos, you know, after I develop them and everything to the magazines, uh, so forth. That's the way I would do it. But does a wrestling like if it's going to be a big event, do they say, okay, Kev, we'll give you X amount, you come and shoot it, or how's that all work? Um, some of them do, some of them do, um. You know, some of them I, I, I voluntarily do. Um, the, the Jeff Jarrett show, I asked uh, I asked a buddy uh, that was running it, and I was like, hey, he's cool. He's like, absolutely, come out. And I, it was, uh, I appreciate it every time they, they give me that opportunity. Even if it's a small show, I'm still happy to do it because I love doing this. You know, it's, um, to be honest with you, I never thought I would be having this much fun at something that I didn't think I was ever going to do. Like, <laughs> it's crazy because, like, I put I put, literally put all my eggs in the basket of trying to be a wrestler, and that's all I wanted to do. And then, well, something else has better plan. And I mean, it's it's been really cool. It's been really cool. And um, what uh, if it, a concert venue? Does a concert venue actually contact you, or you contact them? And then, yeah, you know, you're. I'm trying to get in your business, and if I'm asking too much, just tell me to to. But but I want to know. No, 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 you, no, no. How are you making a living? How do you make a living becoming a photographer, you know? And, I mean, I think it's cool. I think it's uh, the opportunity there to take some of the crazy – I mean, number one, we talk about technology. Photography has come a long way in a very short period of time. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, and, and, and you've and got it's, so Even the phones people. are getting that way, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're, Apple just released one of the phones that, that has uh, a feature on it that's never been – it's never been even in a real camera, <laughs> so it's in a phone yeah, camera. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah. there's just things like that. So so a, a band uh, or a arena actually contacts you, you go take the pictures, and then you take the pictures back to them. How does all that work? Well, um, sometimes I usually ask for like the contact list or the people that actually 
some people you can find some of this on Facebook. To be honest with you, okay, a lot of people right. don't see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and like uh, if you're looking at the right spot, you'll know. Like um, I always try to find a contact list for the press, and then and try to go from there. And and that's that's usually what I do. And um, and I would send them a little bit of my portfolios. I usually do emails. Heck, right now I'm trying to um, I'm trying to do a show that's it's a comedy show with Brad Williams. A uh, funny comedian that I, I always like watching him do his stand up, and uh, he's actually going to be in Memphis and uh, working on that. Um, I tried. I contacted him actually on Facebook, and we exchanged, you know, confirmations and stuff. And so now I know where I need to go. And sometimes you can reach some of these people on Facebook, or some you got to go really diverse and look on Google and try to find it. Um, but yeah, getting paid on 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 some of this, I, I some of these bands I do locally. Um, I started before I even started doing concerts. Um, Aquanet here in Memphis, uh, shout out to those guys. Um, they actually helped me. If it wasn't for them giving me the opportunity and them actually paying me as well, you know, helping me build my portfolio, get better at it, get experience at you know doing local bar shows that's how I was able to get the bigger shows. And you got to start small before you can do anything bigger. And that's, that's usually true. how it that's goes. True, <laughs> so, okay. So you done bands, you did, we're right at the, almost the end of 30 minutes here. And I, I want, there's a couple questions I always like to ask somebody and, you know, you may skirt this question and not answer it. And, and I understand if you don't want any heat, <laughs> but <laughs> of all the wrestlers that you've uh, took pictures of, is there any one of them that's been a, just a total asshole? <laughs> um, oh, I know there has, Kev. So go ahead, man. Don't don't oh, yeah, yeah. me. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you one of them. Uh, I'm just trying to think of who I can give you. That was just a major asshole. Um, God, non photography like that shot anything with him or anything. I just actually met him. Um, he's a pretty big name was Raven. He was a huge, big dick. Um, <laughs> I, I, he was, he was, uh, I don't know if it was just jet lag or not, but yeah, he was one of them. Um, locally, man, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, everybody's been real cool to me. It really has, you know, um, I've got I've got nothing but good things like referees. How did you, know, you like, run in? Yeah, how everything. did you run into Ravens? Did you run into the airport or something? <laughs> no, no. Uh, he was doing a uh, autograph signing. I guess WWE set it up for him. He was doing an autograph signing in Cordova at the Walmart in Cordova. Oh wow! Oh god, it's years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was years ago. This was like back. I think when the invasion still was that going. That could have been something. the reason he was pissed off. If you want to know the truth, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> he said Walmart, <laughs> but, uh, over. That that tells everything, Kevin. Yeah, yeah, on, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, but man, he was uh, he was probably one of the biggest. Uh, CM Punk, I met him. He's a he's a big dick. Uh, <laughs> I met him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people think he's cool, but I I don't know. Maybe if he would, if he knows you, like there's some people out there that like you know they have to know you, you know. Where did you meet? Where did you meet Punk at? Punk was an asshole. I actually saw (laughs) funny story. I me I went to New Orleans uh, for Hell in a Cell when it was. uh, You may remember the pay per view if I tell you the main event. The main event was CM Punk versus Alberto Del Rio and oh god, who was? I can't. No, I can't remember shit. So I don't. I don't even know what who was on the pay per view. Last night, so it was a triple threat match. It was definitely <laughs> right. a triple threat match. It was back in 2011. I know the dates, so at least I try to remember that. My memory is terrible now. Um, but yeah, um, no, like uh, everybody's been real cool. Like everybody told me Dana White was a was a big dick, but no, dude, he was the nicest guy I've ever met. Um, I met him and uh, Dustin. Uh, and it worked Derek King, and they brought all those guys in. Right, they brought for, the uh, looking guys for a fight. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, and that was that was cool. Um, Mick Foley was really cool, super nice guy. Um, man, I've got uh, like there's it's very few, very few. Good, good. Very we like people. to hear that. Uh, That's one thing. What about some bands? <laughs> any any bands we want to trash before we get off here that that are just total assholes to you? 
Um, I don't, I don't know. I'm trying to think of one. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of one. I, I like. I know Roses on Red are really good to me. Like, um, they they are a good band to, to definitely listen to. They're actually lo- you know vocal here. Actually, uh, I wouldn't trash those guys for nothing. Those are really good guys. <laughs> good uh, now bad. Uh, now bad. I don't know. I've heard some terrible music for sure. Um, yeah, I bet. But, uh, I bet because a lot, you know, this. Uh, if you're in the music business, you know that uh, what it sounds like live is uh, sometimes not what it sounds like in a studio. And uh, and when I went to my first concert, that was one of those things where I guess uh, it slaps you in the face. When, and I went and seen Twisted Sister. So what the fuck do you think? You know, they were supposed to be. Uh, <laughs> They were supposed to be good, you know. Now, the two opening bands blew them away, and then Twisted Sister came out and sounded like I, me and my friends were singing the songs. So that's how bad that was. Yeah. But, hey, man, before I get you off, here, I, 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 I want you to put over. I want you to put over your shit where people can actually uh, Instagram, Twitter, and all that. So put that over, and then after that, I do a little fun catchphrase, and we'll be off. All right, sounds good. Um, you can catch me at uh, Dreadhead Kev. On Twitter, uh, it's DreadheadCab22. Same thing with Instagram. I try to keep it simple. Um, now, my Facebook, I'll link that um, on uh, on Twitter, and you can try to get to it. Uh, it's kind of a long ordeal, but it's Dreadhead Cab's <laughs> photography on there. Dustin, well, if you don't know it, you, if you know Dustin Star, then you'll see it. He always tweets it out um, on some of those things, too, on that. But that's where you can get me. Anyway, All right, man. Hey, we want to thank you. For, <laughs> thanks for coming on, man. Same bad time, folks. Same bad channel on the best little wrestling podcast in the business. Be there. And as everyone knows, I love my mama. Thanks, Kev. I appreciate it. No problem, man. It was fun. I Definitely going to have me on again. I was really cool. Thank you for joining us. Another great episode of Shooting the Shiznit. That's right. Always we're looking for contestants for who wants to be the best shiznit or ever. Reminder, we have merch.com. Shirts at $12.99 and sizes up to 6XL. A big shout out to our sponsor, SpunkLube.com, for providing our shirts for All In and sponsoring the show this month. We do have Patreon. You can go to Shooting the Shiznit. We're looking for 10, that's right, 10 people to be Patreons, and then we'll start putting up some material up there. A big shout out and a thank you to Bob McGee and Pro Wrestling's Between the Sheets, Gene Jackson at LocalsToLegends.com, Sean Garmer at Wrestling to Max website, and also Wrestling News Center. You can reach me at Comic Book Mark BT on Twitter, at BT Shooting the Shiznit. Facebook, you'll find the Shooting the Shiznit page. And also the Cool Kids Wrestling and MMA Talk Facebook group. You can listen to all the archives at stspod.club or we're on iTunes, Stitcher, Player FM, Podcast Addict, Spreaker, did I say Spreaker, Stitcher, and all the other podcast players. A shout out to Creative Control. That's right, Creative Control with JoJo. He's also on Keeping It 100, some of my favorite podcasts. And my buddy P3 Radio with Max. That's right. Two non wrestling podcasts. That's Who's Right Podcast and Po Boys Podcast. Check them out. Thank you. And good night.